Welcome to Ocean x -Pre. This is my latest track in Forza Horizon 5 using the recently added Extreme E vehicles. Now, if you're new to Extreme E, it's a really interesting new form of motorsport where they race electric off-road vehicles known as the Odyssey, which you can see here on screen right now, and they take them to some of the most remote and, believe it or not, extreme landscapes all around the world, having some truly awesome racing that I would strongly recommend to anybody willing to check it out. Now, I have fallen in love with this form of motorsport since its inception, so when they added the Extreme E Cars to Forza Horizon 5, I immediately went on the hunt for a fairly realistic environment where I could build a Extreme E track. So here we are. This is what you're seeing today. You are going to see part one of this two-part series. That's how the speed builds tend to work. So video one, which is what we have here today, you'll see the whole track come together from start to finish. The footage is sped up, so it won't necessarily be a sort of step-by-step -step tutorial. But what I'll instead do is sort of talk about the high-level characteristics of an Extreme E track, some of the tips I can pass on to you after building my own, and hopefully you'll find some inspiration if you wanted to have a crack at a circuit like this yourself. And then the second video will release next week and that will actually be gameplay of the track in action against the NPCs racing for real and in that video I'll talk about the pros and cons of this particular circuit and what I would change if I were to make it all over again. So that's how this series works. I've got two other tracks up on the channel already with the same format so you're welcome to check those out. But today we're going to focus in on the Extreme E track. Um, and now we're getting down to prop placement. So Extreme E, because they go to some pretty remote places, they basically take a mobile base with them and then construct a bit of like a tent village at the race location. So you can see I put down some tents there. You'll actually see this whole area really expand throughout the build to somewhat mimic the, uh, the real life Extreme E village that we see travel with the circus. Um, and I've also built here some switch zones as well. So in Extreme E, there's two drivers per car, uh, a male and a female, and they actually swap after one lap during a race. Um, so while that mechanic isn't in Forza Horizon 5 itself, I did want to actually construct that, uh, that switch zone, which you can see here. Uh, and they're pretty basic. As you can see, they're just sort of signage um, that are arranged in this sort of bay format and then each of the cars are assigned a bay and they pull in and swap the drivers. Um, they're a little bit further back from the real racing circuit in real life, um, just for safety reasons obviously, and yes they do have a speed limit when they approach into there, um, but nevertheless for the sake of bringing that real life elements and such a signature piece of the series, I wanted to ensure it was nice and visible in my own track. Now, as I put down some bigger assets out here, uh, one of the reasons why I'd really recommend building an Extreme E track in FH5 is you actually don't have to do an awful lot of prop placement if you don't want to. So if you're building a realistic street circuit inspired by something like Formula One, for example, you pretty much have to put concrete barriers everywhere. Um, and yes, I have made some tracks like that, as you're probably seeing already on the channel. Uh, that is incredibly rewarding, but incredibly time consuming. Whereas an Extreme E track, you're using more of the natural terrain. You just need a few assets here and there to help guide the player. Um, so it's actually a lot more approachable to build a track. Um, and if you are new to the Forza Horizon 5 editor, I would actually recommend an off-road build like this because you get exposure to some of the different tools and mechanics but you don't necessarily have to have those skills honed in perfectly just yet because once again you're dealing with the natural world the setup of your event can look a little bit um you know i wouldn't say tacky but it can look a little bit uh haphazard like you're dealing with the natural terrain that you're given uh which is very much what extreme e do in real life um, in fact, as I'm racing around the circuit here, uh, pun intended, putting down signs, you will actually see that I probably got overkill in terms of signage. The real life events, they mark each checkpoint, if you will, very similar to how they do in Forza Horizon, um, just using some flags though, rather than the flares you can see. Now, because of that, um, look, in real life, the drivers would study the circuit map. They would have a very good idea of what they're getting into chances are they have the whole circuit memorized before they even uh, turn a wheel in the car. So 
Obviously, being Forza Horizon 5, a bit more of a casual platform, players aren't necessarily going to have that knowledge. Um, so as a result, you will see that I put a lot of signs down just to try and help guide the player. Um, so this is one of the less realistic elements of the track, the amount of signage that you'll see me place down. Um, and I relied heavily on this sort of yellow and pink uh, horizon sign, potentially a little bit too much, um, but it was a bit of a necessary trade-off. I often talk about in my speed builds this need to trade off realism versus player experience. Um, so while I could have gone for a purely realistic looking track with a lot less signage, um, and that would have been a quicker build as well, um, I do think that this was a bit of a necessary evil to, uh, to just help guide the player, um, especially given some of these corners are quite quite tight they're quite aggressive switchbacks um, so again the signage just gives them a bit of a guide path uh, as to where they should and shouldn't be going especially towards the end of the circuit here because we actually have the circuit run parallel to itself on on multiple occasions so it was really important to kind of separate the track there uh, and ensure players weren't getting checkpoints confused so relying heavily on that sign don't worry i do come back and use some other signage throughout the track in fact this is the joy of the speed build format you kind of see my own thinking evolve um i was relying heavily on this sign at the start but you'll see later in the build i actually mix it up with a few other flag types as well which really helps um but again i'm just trying to deal with the actual angle of and shape of the corner using these signs to kind of craft that out of the landscape um and again, if you're dealing with a proper racetrack, you'd be on some, you know, preset roads um, and stuff like that, trying to get your barriers to fit with the terrain and look realistic and stuff. Fortunately, with the signs, you just have to create a bit of a perimeter for the player. Now, that big dune you saw there, that is a massive jump, um, potentially a little bit too much if we're talking realism. Uh, but when you land, it is a bit disorientating the first time. So I used one of those wooden jumps and actually turned it on the side to be more like an arrow figure. Um, to help guide the players. And speaking of guiding the players, I put a little caution sign on that rock there because I noticed it has a really big hitbox. Um, so if you brushed up against that rock and still had like half a meter clearance before hitting it, uh, I would often find the car would still get caught. Um, so I felt the need to cover that up to, to, to prevent players getting too close. Um, and you'll see there's a, there's a few things like that around the track where once again, you sacrifice a bit of realism for player experience. Now, speaking of sacrificing realism, I think this last sort of complex is where I probably went a little bit overkill. Um, I do a lot of barrier placement down here and you'll see it shortly. Um, again, I was thinking about player navigation, making sure they knew where to go, given a lot of these checkpoints were very close together. Um, but yeah, see what you think. You'll see it come together. It's It, it looks a bit more like a, a permanent rally cross circuit by the end of it. But overall, we might discuss that in a bit more detail during the, the gameplay video and review next week. Now, in terms of overall circuit design, electric vehicles, they are, here you can see me using some more flag variety, but talking more about the overall circuit philosophy, um, electric vehicles don't tend to have the same top speed as um, other vehicles out there. So a big part of this circuit design for me was actually just ensuring there was always something there to keep the player engaged. Um, so because the top speed isn't that insane in these cars, because they are quite heavy um, and they do have to go quite a distance and they are also very versatile, they have to be robust to survive the impacts. So they sacrifice a little bit of top end speed for durability. And once again, because players are probably expecting that constant insanity in a Forza Horizon 5 race, I relied heavily on the terrain itself to keep things interesting. So even if there was a flat run between two checkpoints, I would try everything I could to make sure there was something to keep it engaging and challenging, whether that be a really bumpy section like the run into turn one, whether that be um, some artificial rocks that I actually place in later in the build that you'll see uh, to break up a long straight, um, or sort of playing chicken with the ocean, which is what this last complex is here. You can see the ocean in the background uh, and you come flying down the dune and you've got to pick your braking zone because if you get it wrong, uh, you're going to go out into the water. Now, fortunately, you got quite a lot of leeway before the game teleports you back to dry land, um, but nevertheless, it costs you some speed if you overshoot and end up swimming with your electric vehicle. So 
I've always tried to make it interesting. As I said, tried to have a key thing for players to sort of grapple with as they're racing. Uh, whether they are versing online or other players, the track itself is designed to be a challenge. And I feel like they kind of go for that in real life too. Just surviving an extreme e-race uh, is quite a feat, despite them being quite short. That is just how insane uh, the terrain is. And I think what makes that even more impressive is that, you know, it's very common for at least one car not to finish a race. Uh, and those cars are built from the ground up to actually try and deal with some of these environments. Now, once again, talking about realism versus player experience, Switch Zone wouldn't normally be next to a, a fast section like this, uh, but because it is in my track, I've put some, some concrete barriers to try and reduce the chances of players having a head-on collision with uh, the Switch Zone area, uh, which would be less than ideal. But now you can see it, I'm trying to put some blue flags up on some of the, the key tighter corners just to try and highlight where the, the top of the circuit is um, and also add a bit of colour as well because it is a little bland as I said I relied quite heavily on, on a select few assets um, so I tried to, uh, to mix it up a little bit. Uh, and you can see me here now putting signs next to the checkpoints as well because I wasn't sure if the final game mode would use, would use the flares or the flags. I can't remember the way Forza Horizon 5 switches those out. Um, but yeah, I put these signs down next to the checkpoints just in case it was flares only. Um, just to create something solid for players to aim for. Uh, Expanding the switch zone here, yeah, we extend it out a little bit. Now I had a bit of a glitch with turn one, uh, where the checkpoint appears behind one of the trucks I placed down, uh, which is really, really frustrating. But fortunately the way I've sort of angled all the props means that players have no option but to go left where that actual checkpoint is. Here you can, here you can see it. So in the editor view, that checkpoint is actually behind the truck weirdly. Um, sorry, in, in the race view. That's where the flags and flares appear. Um, but the actual legitimate checkpoint is still as we see it in the editor view right there. So fortunately, because of the way I placed the props down, players are forced to get the actual checkpoint despite it visually looking elsewhere. So it's a really unfortunate bug, but the track still works. And because it's right at the start of the lap, uh, I don't think players actually notice the glitch all that much. Now, what we're doing here, uh, as I said, I wanted the terrain to keep players constantly engaged. Um, now, one of the other things I wanted to do was have something visual to look at all the time. So I've tried to keep it fairly low density in terms of assets and props, uh, but I have made a few TV trucks and cameras around the track. Now, here's that artificial rock area I was telling you about. So we had a massive straight line run between two checkpoints here. As I said, something I was trying to avoid. So I actually placed a lot of rocks and sunk them into the ground very, very carefully uh, to create a rocky section. Now, Extreme have had these in real life, albeit natural rocky areas rather than those made from scratch. Um, and it really tests the, the durability of the cars and it's a bit of a risk versus reward because you can't hit them at full speed but then you run the risk of actually damaging your vehicle or rolling or something like that. Uh, and that is the same in this track as well. Uh, I might go back and tweak them a little bit. They might be a touch too aggressive, uh, but if you hit them down the middle between the checkpoint, you tend to get through fine. But yeah, if you go far left or far right, then you run a, uh, a risk of rolling over. So just a bit of warning for you on that one. The only thing I did regret about that rocky area is I put down some trees once again just to break up the open landscape. Um, but those trees actually spawn in only once you get quite close to them and it looks a little bit goofy. So um, that's a that's a con I will almost certainly bring up again in the review video next week. But the actual track itself is just about done now. Um, and as I said, you won't really be able to truly appreciate the layout and stuff until gameplay comes out next week. But I'm putting a bit of focus now on the switch zone um, or on the village itself. Once again, trying to build up this feeling that that is the key home base. Um, so I whack down uh, some extra tents, some extra TVs and stuff like that because all the mechanics and stuff like that, they actually monitor the, the race from, from base, if you will. Uh, and you can see me sort of going around the circuit, adding a bit of color and movement where, where I feel it's needed as well. Um, it's not really a spectator sport, uh, but it was feeling a little bit bland. So I've uh, sort of put some things in and around the place like these sort of satellites on trucks, uh, sort of motor, uh, motorbikes to help if there was an incident, um, and balloons in the sky as well. Once again, just to create that feeling of an event. 
Uh, and of course the cameras. Uh, in fact, one of the things that impresses me so much about Extreme E is the way they, um, they manage to broadcast so well from such a remote location most of the time. Um, it honestly, the, the way they broadcast and how well they broadcast is just as impressive as the vehicles themselves, in my opinion. Um, but I'm a bit of a uh, bit of a TV nut in terms of live sports. So, yeah, one of the many, many reasons to check out Extreme E. Uh, and if I didn't mention it earlier, it's also quite accessible. They put a lot of their races on YouTube. Um, you can actually watch just about everything except the very final race live on YouTube for free, uh, which is just awesome. So yeah, strongly recommend it. And I'm flying around the track right now doing some last minute checks. Here you can see this is where I was given into that temptation to sort of over detail, um, but I feel like I was fairly restrained. Um, but we're just about there now. Um, and as I said, you will see a lap of this track next week. Um, and overall, I'm just really happy with how it's turned out, especially this home base over here. Putting some tires on some of the concrete in case anyone ran wide. And then finally adding some uh, sort of extra tents and stuff like that because the village was feeling a little bit on the small side for a while there. Um, including the round one in the real life event they have a circular tent that acts as the the mission control if you will uh, and that's where most of the the key people and teams watch from uh, including the second driver before they get in the vehicle so anyway putting some final little pieces of detail in and around the track uh, moving the trees a little further back there in case anyone had a uh, an incident and went into them especially over those rocks um, but yeah just final fly throughs now uh, and once you can see uh, again, you can see me here doing some detailing. Uh, using the asset rotation actually to create a bit of a custom finish line uh, that replicated the real life Extreme E start and finish line, sort of like these vertical struts. Uh, I, I chose not to use the existing start and finish lines that are in the game just because they didn't really match with what Extreme E had for real. Uh, but what I created there from those sort of apex signs uh, was a bit more accurate. So yeah, just whack those down against the finish line. Uh, the only risk there is that they can, uh, you can get stuck on them if you uh, made a mistake through the final corner entering lap two. But anyway, here we go. We're just about done adding some more cameras in and around the place. One thing I haven't mentioned, I've deliberately got a very bumpy run to turn one. It's something you see in the real life tracks as well, just to encourage different lines and different approaches. Um, and everyone converges at that first hairpin then, which makes for some some intense racing against the AI and I haven't even tried it against real life players online just yet. So super excited to see how that turns out. But there we are. That is the speed build of the track. As I said, you're not gonna see gameplay into the next video, but I hope you check that one out. I hope you enjoy the circuit and you found some inspiration and some broad tips as well if you were to create your own extreme -y track. Now, if you cannot wait until next week, I will actually have the track and its share code down in the description so you can go and play it yourself. But I do hope you tune in for us to discuss the pros and cons of the track and some further advice I'd offer you guys in the gameplay video coming next week. So please drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the track from what you've seen. Let me know what you think of Extreme E2 if you're only checking out for the first time. I personally love the series and I hope to see you in the next video and future Forza Horizon 5 builds very, very soon.